Okay. All right, hey guys, my name's Chris. My um, name's Wes. We're your assistant lecturers right now. Um, this is our first video we're doing, and it looks very poor. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually Wes's phone on a chair on a table. Yep. Um, but until Dr. Schwartz pays us more, this is probably <laughs> the best you guys are gonna get. Yep. So this video is about accessing memory within the X Mega. So first thing we wanna talk about, and I'll let Wes talk about that, is the two types of memory that we have in the X Mega while I continue to draw. All right, so the two basic types we have are program memory and data memory, which is in the form of SRAM. Um, so what program memory be in the form of? Yeah, so program memory is in the form of flash, uh, data memory is in the term of SRAM on our process. So what are the major differences? The key difference is um, program memory is in terms of 16-bit words, and data memory is in terms of bytes, All right? Yep. Um, so as far as, as far as accessing these types of memories go, uh, we have three pointers in the X Mega, X, Y, and Z. For data memory, you can use either, all three of these pointers. Um, for program memory, you have to use the Z pointer. So, Wes mentioned that program memory is in terms of words and data memory is in terms of bytes. Did you not? Yep. So, what is a word? So, Wes, tell me what a word is. And a word can be defined as many things, but that for, is our, true. for our processor, it's two bytes, so 16 bits. Two bytes, which equals 16 bits. Get off the screen. So, in program memory, every single <coughs> address, I'll draw this a little bit bigger really quickly. <laughs> every address, if this is address zero, just chose the right two zeros. And address zero, it's going to have two bytes. And for convention, I'm going to call this byte zero and byte one. So whenever we're accessing a word, or whenever we're accessing a program memory address, we really are accessing a location that has two bytes within it. So back to the pointers really quick. Whenever we're accessing a memory location with an instruction, in the X Mega, we're not covering what instructions you would use for that. Um, we're, we need to have the pointer be pointing or referencing a specific location. And that's always going to be an actual physical number, an entity that we can reference. So we need to tell that pointer to be referencing a specific number. And the instruction we're going to do, I'll let Wes cover that, we're going to use a specific instruction to do that. So we're going we're gonna, to, so we have, we have Z pointer, right? Um, so why are we using the Z in this case? So, let's so this video. because we want to load from program memory in this video, we're we have to use the Z pointer, all right? And uh, you stand over here, Wes. So this, the Z uh, the Z pointer consists of two bytes or registers, Z low and Z high. And remember, each one of these is a single byte, and Z is a 16-bit pointer, all right? And the same so, for the X and the Y pointers as well. Yeah. So uh, in order to in order to actually start getting something from memory, we have to load Z with some value, right? So the way we're gonna do that is with the LDI, or load immediate instruction. And we're gonna write that over, let's write it over to the left. All right, so LDI, Z high, and then the value you put here will be the high byte of the Z pointer. And then we'll do the same thing for the low byte. So remember, whenever, and by this point, we'll be exposing you to uh, the load immediate instruction if you haven't already been exposed to it. But the load immediate instruction is going to be taking a register and it's going to be taking an immediate value as a syntax. So what we're trying to do right now, what we're going to expose you to is we want to load from a specific address in program memory. So for examples of this video, for the purposes of this video, let's say we're trying to access address 6000 in program memory. So this might be tempting, so you recognize that, oh, this looks like if it's in hex, this number is consisting of two bytes, byte one and byte zero. So this is the high byte of this value, 6,000. This is the low byte. So it might be tempting to say that we're going to be putting hex six zero here and hex zero zero here. But we'll explain briefly in a second why that's not the case. So I'll let Wes start drawing. Okay, so um, he used the example of 6,000. 
uh, for a programming we address, but we're gonna start we're gonna start with zero just to be simple. So, so let me use a different. While Wes is drawing, I'll explain what we're trying to do. So the purpose of what we're trying to do, remember, with an 8-bit processor, which our XBang is an 8-bit processor, all instructions that reference a memory location need to be in terms of bytes. Those memory locations or those values need to be in terms of bytes. So whenever we're dealing with program memory, which is dealing with words, we need to somehow convert the address in program memory that we're trying to access in terms of bytes. We need to convert it to bytes. So what we're trying to show right now is how do we actually go about thinking about how we convert from words to bytes. So in this first address, we see, okay, if I'm at program memory address zero, I've, I have two bytes in that address, byte zero and byte one. Now if I'm at address one, I have byte, I'm just for convention for this purposes, I'm gonna say this is byte two and byte three for overall memory. So this is the second, this is the third byte and the fourth byte. So if we keep going, we'll see that this is byte four and byte five. Now, I might start noticing the pattern that, let's say at program memory address one, the first byte in this address is byte two. And at program memory address two, the first byte that I access is byte four. So if I do one more, For, byte th for address three in program memory, the first byte that I'm accessing is byte six. So it seems like there's a pattern here. What's the pattern, Wes? So again, remember, processor is eight bits. So you have to think of everything in terms of bytes. So the processor has to think, which, which byte from program memory do I want to grab or um, load, I guess we should say. So in the case of, uh, of, say, program memory address three, we know that we want byte six, right? So the easy way to get to there is to multiply the program memory address by two, right? Two times two, four. Two times one, two. And this pattern goes all the way throughout memory, okay? So like he, he used the example earlier of hex 6,000, right? At this point, how many bytes have I, what byte am I accessing at that point? Right. So you multiply this by two, right? So if you want to, and another way to think of this which is easier to think of in binary is shifting left by one. So, so if we draw this out. What Wes is saying is that multiplying by two is the same as shifting left by one, which by convention we usually write that notation anyway. So this is, this is uh, 6,000 in binary. So if we shift this left once, we get 0B1100, and then everything else is zeros. And then um, this turns into hex C000, and uh, if you convert it to hex, which convention, we're just gonna stick with hex. Um, so, so remember, this is, this is the byte that we wanna access. This is the program memory word, and this is the byte that we wanna access. So this is what we actually need to load into the Z register. So before, before when we were saying, okay, if we're trying to access word program memory address 6000, remember the first step was that I have to point my Z pointer to that correct address in terms of bytes. So we first had to ask, okay, what is 6,000 in terms of bytes? Well, we just answered that question. It's going to be C1,000. That's the byte that we're trying to access. So we're going to be loading. If C1,000 is my two bytes that I'm trying to access, the low byte of that's going to be 0, 0 still, byte 0, or Z lo, or low byte. And then that C1, C0, I mean, is going to be the high byte, which is going to go into Z high in our case. So Z low would be getting the immediate value of 0, 0, and Z high would be getting the value of C0. And one other way that I just want to say, another way to look at this, we've explained this, the same thing as if I'm at program memory address 3, in memory sequentially I've passed 6 bytes by that time. So when I'm accessing byte 6, I've also passed 6 bytes. So whichever way you want to look at it, for thinking of how you want to remember this, go for it. But those are the two ways that we like to explain it.